Aunt Rebecca, why do I have to go with Madame Victoria? What's happening? Sarah asked. Aunt Rebecca's heart broke at the sound of Sarah's innocent question. She knew she couldn't hide the truth from her any longer. It's, it's because I needed to borrow money to help your uncle get better. Madame Victoria agreed to lend me the money, but only if you become collateral. In the busy city of Ibadan, a lively city filled with the sounds of laughter and the hustle of daily life, there lived a girl who faced a tragedy that changed her life forever. It was the loss of her beloved parents. Young Sarah's world was turned upside down as she found herself navigating through life without her parents at a very tender age of 10. Her parents, who had been her world, were suddenly taken from her in a tragic accident. It happened that on one fateful day, Sarah's parents were involved in a terrible car accident. Despite the efforts of the doctors and nurses, they could not be saved. Her parents, who had gone too soon, left her with nothing but memories and a world of uncertainty. The loss of her mom and dad left a void in her heart. As young Sarah's world was turned upside down, left with no one to care for her, Sarah found herself alone in the world, her young heart heavy with grief and sorrows. As Sarah sat on the warm out sofa in their living room, her eyes filled with curiosity and wanting to ask her aunt a question. She said tearfully, But Aunt Rebecca, what happened to my mom and dad? Why did they have to go? Aunt Rebecca sighed, placing a comforting hand on her shoulder. I know it's hard to understand, but your mom and dad were taken from us too soon there. She replied, her soft voice, shaky and teary but she held on knowing she was trying to comfort her niece and she doesn't want her to see her in that state but we must cherish the memories we have of them and find strength in each other as they are in a better place now aunt rebecca said sarah nodded her young heart heavy with grief and sorrow and she won't be seeing her parents again Amidst the chaos and sorrow, Sarah's aunt, Rebecca, emerged as a beacon of hope. Despite her own struggles to make ends meet, Aunt Rebecca stepped in to provide solace and care to the grieving girl. Sarah clung to her aunt's comforting words, finding comfort in the thought that her parents were still with her in spirit. As Sarah settled into her new home with Aunt Rebecca, the pain of her loss lingered like a shadow. She longed for the comforting embrace of her parents, their laughter echoing in her memories like distant echoes. Though the pain of loss lingered, Aunt Rebecca's love provided a glimmer of light in the darkness. Sarah's aunt, with her gentle smile and soothing words, became a beacon of hope in Sarah's darkened world, and Sarah found solace in Aunt Rebecca's unwavering love. The bond between them started growing stronger with each passing day, and though the pain of her loss never truly really faded, Sarah began to find moments of joy and laughter amidst the warmth of her new family. And so, in the bustling city of Ibadan, amidst the ebb and flow of life, Sarah found a new home and a new family in the loving embrace of her aunt Rebecca. Little does she know that this was just the beginning of her journey, filled with twists and turns yet to come. Sarah's journey began, a journey of love, loss, and the unwavering bond between a niece and her aunt. This turned into weeks and weeks into months. Sarah adjusted to her new life under aunt Rebecca's care. Despite the struggles of making ends meet, Aunt Rebecca poured her heart and soul into providing for Sarah, ensuring that she lacked absolutely nothing. Aunt Rebecca tenderly and softly 
would always say to Sarah, you are my precious girl, Sarah. I will always be here for you, no matter what. Aunt Rebecca took Sarah in and they lived happily together. Sarah, on her own path, was always up and doing. She did all the house chores, helped Aunt Rebecca with going to the market to sell her foodstuffs. Indeed, Sarah was a blessing to Aunt Rebecca's household, as everyone who came across Sarah loved her. Aside from being up and doing, Sarah was so respectful and well-mannered. As time went on, Aunt Rebecca called Sarah and told her her plans of enrolling her to school. Indeed, it was one of the best days of Sarah's life, as she had always been anticipating going back to school. Thank you so much, Auntie. I really appreciate. Sarah said as she gave her Aunt Rebecca a hug. Aunt Rebecca, in response, said, You are always welcome, my precious girl. You deserve everything good, and I will do anything possible to see you get it. Sarah looked at her aunt, tears coming down from her cheeks, speechless as to what to say to her aunt, gave her another warm hug and said, God bless you, aunt. Sarah got in admitted into her new school. She did so well that at the end of every third term, she usually got lots of gifts from her teachers in regards to her excellent performance in school. Sarah, rushing home to show her aunt her results, said, Auntie, Auntie, Auntie Rebecca, who was inside the house, hurried outside to know what was going on with her niece. I came first in my class again, Auntie, Sarah said with lots of happiness as she handed her result booklet to her aunt. Oh, my precious little girl, you have brought us pure joy since you arrived into this house. I'm so proud of you, my sweet girl. Aunt Rebecca replied as she was seen smiling going through Sarah's result booklet. Let's go in, Aunt Rebecca said. I will definitely get you a gift for this excellent result of yours. Yay, thank you, Auntie, Sarah said excitedly, as she went into her room to change and come help her aunt with selling her foodstuffs at the market. As time went on, Sarah did so well that she graduated from primary school as the best student. Of course, it was time for the secondary school expert. She didn't allow her bad peer pressure to get to her. Instead, she stayed focused and kept doing well. Due to her academic excellence, Sarah was made the head girl of the school in her SS2. Most students loved her as she was down to earth, irrespective of her being the head girl. She helped students with their assignments and other things they found wanting. All teachers loved her because she was down to earth and really a loving person. One day, a dark cloud descended upon Aunt Rebecca's household as her husband fell ill. With each passing day, his condition worsened and the medical bills kept piling up. There was no more means to pay them as Aunt Rebecca had already exhausted all her savings from her food business money and did not know what else to do. Aunt Rebecca felt helpless. Her heart was heavy with worry and despair as she was unable to come out with a plan to raise money to help her dying husband. Aunt Rebecca, who had borrowed money from her friends and couldn't pay back, came back to Nkechi, her close friend, and said, Please, borrow me another money. Before the end of the month, I will definitely pay you back. Nkechi said to her, Rebecca, my dear, all the other money I have been borrowing you, I haven't seen any of them, and here you are, asking that I borrow you another one. Do you think I pluck money from trees? Nketi said, I'm sorry, Rebecca. I no longer have any money to dash you for free. Rebecca felt like the ground should open and swallow her, and she felt like she had failed her husband. Aunt Rebecca knew she had to do something as soon as possible to save her husband's life. In her desperation, Aunt Rebecca made her way through the crowded streets of Ibadan. She knew that there was only one person in the city who could provide the assistance she needed. It was Madame Victoria, the formidable woman who ran the notorious brothel known for its cruelty. Madame Victoria was known far and wide for her ruthless business dealings and the harsh treatment of those who crossed her path. Gathering her courage, 
Aunt Rebecca approached Madame Victoria's establishment, her heart pounding with fear and uncertainty, as she pleaded for help. Her hands were equally trembling with anxiety. As she stood before the imposing figure of Madame Victoria, her voice quivered as she made her plea. Please, Madame Victoria, I beg of you. My husband is seriously ill, and I have no means to pay for his treatment. I'm desperate as it stands now. I need your help, ma, with the sum of two million naira for his surgery. Please, is there anything you can do to help us? As Rebecca said tearfully, Madame Victoria, known for her sharp tongue and misless demeanor, regarded Aunt Rebecca with a cold stare. Her eyes seemed to pierce through Aunt Rebecca's soul as she considered the desperate woman before her. I can lend you the money you need, but you must understand that nothing comes for free in this world. If I'm to help you, you must be willing to offer me something of value in return. Aunt Rebecca's heart sank as she realized the gravity of Madame Victoria's words. She knew that agreeing to Madame Victoria's stance would come at a great cost, but the thought of losing her husband was unbearable. She knew what Madame Victoria was asking for, something precious, something that she held there, but being faced with the looming shadow of her husband's illness, Aunt Rebecca had no choice but to agree. Madame Victoria gave her conditions, and the condition was Sarah. Aunt Rebecca's beloved niece. I will lend you the money, but only if Sarah becomes collateral. You must understand, Rebecca, that business is business, said Madame Victoria. Tearfully, Aunt Rebecca agreed to Madame Victoria's terms, knowing that it was the only way to save her husband's life. She promised herself that she would return for Sarah as soon as she could, praying that it would be soon. With a heavy heart, Aunt Rebecca returned home, Clutching the borrowed money in her trembling hands, she knew that her decision would come at a great cost, but she had no choice if she wanted to save her husband's life. As she entered their home, Sarah's innocent eyes widened with curiosity and concern. Sarah, looking all confused and scared at the sight of seeing her aunt the way she was, said, Aunt Rebecca, what's wrong? Why do you look so sad? Oh, it's not in Sarah. Just some grown-up problems. You don't need to worry about it. Aunt Rebecca said, forcing a smile. But Sarah could sense that something was wrong. She watched as Aunt Rebecca paced back and forth with worry. After some minutes, Aunt Rebecca broke the silence and called out to Sarah. Sarah, my love, please come and sit by my side. I need to tell you something important. Sarah, slowly coming to sit next to her, as she knew the cat was about to be let out of the bag. Yes, auntie, what's the problem, she said. Aunt Rebecca, filled with lots of sad emotion, said, you'll be going to Madame Victoria's place to stay for the time being, my dear. Aunt Rebecca, why do I have to go with Madame Victoria? What's happening? Sarah asked. Aunt Rebecca's heart broke at the sound of Sarah's innocent question. She knew she couldn't hide the truth from her any longer. It's, it's because I needed to borrow money to help your uncle get better. Madame Victoria agreed to lend me the money, but only if you become collateral. Aunt Rebecca said tearfully, Sarah's eyes widened with fear and confusion. She couldn't understand why she had to leave her home and go with Madame Victoria. It's just for a little while there. I promise I will come back for you. Please, trust me. Aunt Rebecca said, as she was filled with emotions, white tears dropping down her eyes. But Aunt Rebecca, why do I have to go? Can't we find another way to help Uncle without me leaving? Sarah said, with her voice trembling with fear. Aunt Rebecca's heart shattered at Sarah's question one more time. She wished with all her heart that there was another way, but she knew that time was running out and they had no other option. I'm sorry, Sarah. Nothing can be done at this point, but I promise, it's just for a little while. I will come back for you as soon as your uncle gets better. Please, trust me. Sarah nodded. Although she was young, she could sense the fear and uncertainty in her auntie's voice. But she trusted Aunt Rebecca with all her heart and believed that she would keep her promise. But the thought of leaving her home and going with Madame Victoria 
filled her with dread and so much sorrow. And so, with tearful goodbyes and heavy hearts, Aunt Rebecca watched as Sarah was taken away by Madame Victoria at the age of 17, knowing that she had made a sacrifice that would haunt her for years to come. But in that moment, all she could think about was saving her husband's life, praying that it would be worth the heartbreaking bargain she had made. And so, as Sarah was laid away to Madame Victoria's brothel, Aunt Rebecca hoped that one day they would be reunited and their family would be whole once again. As the years passed, Sarah found herself weighed down by the burdens of life at Madame Victoria's brothel. With each passing day, the hope of Aunt Rebecca's return grew dimmer and the weight of her absence pressed down on Sarah's heart like a heavy stone. Forced to work at Madame Victoria's brothel, Sarah's life became a relentless circle of hardship and sorrow, each day blood into the next, as she endured the cruel demands of Madame Victoria and the harsh realities of her life, her young spirit slowly being crushed under the weight of her circumstances. In the dimly lit confines of the brothel, Sarah toyed away, her days filled with tasks too burdensome for a 17-year-old. She scrubbed floors, washed dishes, and tended to the needs of Madame Victoria's client, all the while longing for the warmth and comfort of her aunt's embrace. Madame Victoria, when will Aunt Rebecca come for me? As she promised she would, Sarah asked. With a cruel laugh, Madame Victoria answered, She has forgotten about you, girl. You belong to me now. Aunt Rebecca made her choice, and now you are mine. Sarah's heart sank at Madame Victoria's words, realizing that Aunt Rebecca may never come for her. The pain of betrayal cut deep, and she struggled to come to terms with the harsh reality of her situation. In that moment, she realized that Aunt Rebecca's promise had been nothing but empty words, a cruel deception that had left her alone and abandoned in a world filled with darkness and despair. Despite the darkness and harshness of her circumstances, Sarah coped deep within her heart. She refused to believe that Aunt Rebecca had truly forgotten about her, holding on to the memories of their time together with unwavering determination that surrounded her. Sarah held to the memories of her life before the brothel, the love of her parents, the warmth of Aunt Rebecca's care. They were the light that guided her through the darkest of times, reminding her that she was more than just a commodity to be bought and sold. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Sarah's resilience grew stronger, her spirit refusing to be broken by the cruelty of her surroundings. Though she faced endless hardship and sorrow, she found solace in the small moments of kindness that shined like stars in the darkest of her life. Each day became a battle of survival as Sarah navigated the dangerous world of the brothel, longing for the comfort and security of her own embrace. But as the years passed, hope began to fade, replaced by resignation and acceptance of her fate. And so, amidst the harsh reality of life at Madame Victoria's brothel, Sarah held on to hope that one day Aunt Rebecca would come for her and that she would find a way to escape her life of hardship and sorrow. Sweeping her away, from the darkness and into the light of a new beginning. Little did she know, the road ahead would be fraught with challenges and obstacles, testing her strength and resolve in ways she could never have imagined. Sarah's days at Madame Victoria's bottle were filled with endless toil and despair. On a fateful Friday evening, as Madame Victoria sat all alone in her room, thinking of ways to make more money, an idea came to her mind. Sarah is 18 years already, she said. She will be able to do things other young girls are doing to make me more money, as her aunt couldn't come to clear her debt. I think she has passed the age of cleaning and serving. I need to add her to the list of hookers in order to make me more money, she thought out aloud. Hence, Madame Victoria decided to upgrade Sarah's rank from the girl who used to be a cleaner and do other chores to a hooker. One day, as Sarah sat alone in the courtyard of Madame Victoria's brothel, lost in her thoughts, she felt a tap on her back. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Madame Victoria had been the one shouting her name all this while, 
But Sarah was deeply lost in thought, thinking of ways she could escape the brothel. Yes, ma. She answered, I have decided that you will no longer be working as a cleaner at my brothel again. Sarah looked at her immediately, not sure if it was good news or an arrival or something bad. But you will be working as one of my hookers. Madame Victoria said to Sarah, What? A hooker? Sarah said in amazement as she was burst into tears. This is not the life I want. No, this is not the life I dreamed of. Oh my God, what was all this? Sarah said, tears rolling down her eyes. Quiet, girl. Madame Victoria replied as she looked at Sarah with a look of contempt. Your aunt still owes me a huge sum amount of money and has not come to pay ever since then. So you have to fill in for her and pay the debt she was unable to pay me. Sarah's heart sank at Madame Victoria's words, realizing that escape may be more difficult than she had ever imagined. Each attempt of Sarah's to leave was met with further demand for money, making escape seem like an impossible dream, leaving Sarah trapped in a circle of false hope and despair. The walls of the brothel seemed to close in around her, suffocating her with the weight of her captivity. With each failed attempt, Sarah's hope dwindled, replaced by a sense of resignation and despair. She had no other choice than to compel to Madame Victoria's command so that she could save up more money and leave the brothel as soon as she could. Despite the harsh reality of her situation, she held on to hope, the hope of escape. Determined to break free from Madame Victoria's clutches, Sarah accepted to be one of Madame Victoria's hookers. Sarah's words seemed dark and suffocating, trapped in Madame Victoria's brothel. Her days stretched on endlessly, each one feeling more hopeless than the last. In order to enable her to make more money for Madame Victoria so she can leave the brothel as soon as she can, Sarah started her work the next day as a hooker. Sleeping with men and being paid was now her new job. Each night, as she lay in her cold, cramped room, Sarah counted the money she had made for the day and submitted to Madame Victoria in order to enable her debts to keep reducing. Why the little change she had made, she kept it in a secret hiding place. Dreaming of the day she could finally leave the brothel behind and start a new life. With each little money she added to her savings, her dreams of freedom grew stronger. They turned into weeks and weeks into months, even months into years. But still, Sarah kept working at the brothel as a hooker. After a particular job on a Saturday evening, Sarah came into her room as usual to check her savings and know her progress. To her greatest surprise, she had raised lots of money from her little changes she had been saving for years now. Coupled with the fact that she equally gave most shares to Madame Victoria after each day's job. I will go to Madame Victoria first thing tomorrow morning to tell her I have completed her money, Sarah said. She was so excited that night that she could barely sleep. I can't wait to see Aunt Rebecca again, Sarah thought to herself and smiled. Not long after, she dozed off to sleep. As soon as she woke up, Sarah hurriedly went to Madame Victoria's lounge to go look for her. Knock, knock, she said. Is anyone home? Sarah said, as she was excited to let Madame Victoria know she had saved the 10 million naira her aunt borrowed. Though, her aunt borrowed 2 million naira, but Madame Victoria lied to her that it was 10 million naira. Who is that? Come in, Mrs. Victoria said with her high-pitched voice. Sarah entered in, shaking and not knowing the exact words to use or say. I, I, she muttered as she was terrified because of the cold gaze Madame Victoria gave her. Speak up or you leave my room. Madame Victoria said to Sarah. Sarah, shaking and filled with so much anxiety, said, I have saved up enough money, Madame Victoria. Can I leave now? Please, I just want to go home. Sarah said to Madame Victoria, You owe me more than you can ever repay, girl. You will never live here. Madame Victoria replied as she looked at Sarah with a look of contempt. Hearing Madame Victoria say these words shattered Sarah the more. How do I get the extra 20 million naira Madame Victoria is asking I pay? Who do I run to? What will I do now? She said to herself 
as tears ran down her cheeks. Despite her best efforts, Madame Victoria seemed determined to keep her trapped in the brothel, using every means at her disposal to maintain her control. No matter how much she saved, it seemed like she would never be able to buy her freedom. Madame Victoria's hold on her was too strong and her demands too relentless as she kept multiplying the interest attached to the money to enable Sarah not to be able to pay her. But despite the odds stacked against her, Sarah refused to give up, knowing that somewhere out there freedom awaited her, and so with each passing day, she continued to save, with determination burning in her heart. She vowed to continue fighting for her freedom no matter the cost. She knew that the road ahead would be difficult and filled with danger, but she refused to let fear hold her back. It was a Friday night, and as usual, everyone was expected to work. So all the hookers went to their various destinations to meet their client. Sarah was not exempted as well. The following morning, as Sarah was preparing to go back to the house, she found a wallet on the floor. It happened to be the wallet of a guy who had lodged in the hotel the previous night. Inside the wallet was an ID card and some amount of money in it. Sarah quickly brought out the ID card and called the number on it. A young man picked the call and she introduced herself, telling him the reason for her call. The young man was in complete shock, as she couldn't believe that someone could pick up his wallet and call him to return it. He was in complete shock. They agreed on a place to meet, so he can collect the wallet back. He thanked her and told her that he was on his way there. On getting to the location, he saw Sarah and said to her, Hey, mind if I join you? Sarah looked up. Surprised by the sudden intrusion, she had grown accustomed to being ignored or scorned by those around her, and Peter's kindness caught her off guard. Um, sure, I guess, Sarah said hesitantly. As Peter sat down beside her, Sarah couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. She had learned to keep her guard up around strangers, wary of their intentions, but as she looked into Peter's eyes, she sensed a sincerity that she hadn't encountered in a long time. Hi. I'm Peter by name. I couldn't introduce myself probably when you called. I'm equally a businessman who specializes in trading of goods. What's your name and what is it that you do for a living? Peter asked Sarah. I'm Sarah by name, she said. Oh, such a lovely name, Peter said. Okay, Sarah, what do you do for a living? Peter asked again. Sarah smiled and said to him, This is your wallet you dropped. Here you go. And stood up to leave. Thank you for the drinks. Sarah said as she handed over the wallet to him and went home. Peter, on the other hand, opened the wallet and to his greatest surprise, nothing was missing from it. Who is this girl? He asked himself as he was confused and curious as to why a hooker would see a wallet filled with money and not attempt removing even one. He was impressed. He knew that whatever that made Sarah a hooker had more to eat, so he decided there to monitor her whereabouts. On one fateful evening, Peter followed Sarah home without her knowing he was following her. He wanted to know more about her. To her greatest surprise, someone tapped her back and it was Peter. What are you doing here? She asked. Do you want my madame to punish me? Sarah asked, looking all confused as to not knowing what to say to him anymore. Relax, Peter said. I've been monitoring your way about. I wanted to know more about you as you refused telling me the other day we met. Come with me, Sarah. Let's go to a safe place so we can talk. Sarah reluctantly followed him inside his car and they went to a nearby bar to have something to eat and drink. So, Sarah, you work at a brothel as a hooker and same you. You saw my wallet filled with money and made no attempt to remove even one. Instead, you trace the owner and return it. I would really love to know more about you, Peter said as he looked at Sarah affectionately. Eventually, Sarah opened up to Peter and told him everything about how her aunt and Madame Victoria used her as collateral. After narrating her sad life experience to him, Peter, on his own part, did not know when tears started rolling down from his eyes. I will do everything in my power to make sure you leave this place, Peter said to Sarah. Thank you, Peter. They ate, drank, and had a couple of gists. When it was getting late, Peter offered to give Sarah a ride and take her back. Why they looked for a way to make sure Sarah was freed. This turned in two weeks and weeks into months, 
Still, Peter remained unwavered in his determination to free Sarah from Madame Victoria's clutches. He knew that it wouldn't be easy, but he was willing to do whatever it took to see Sarah smile again. With each passing day, Peter's determination to free Sarah from Madame Victoria's grasp only grew stronger. He knew that he couldn't stand idle doing nothing while Sarah suffered, trapped in a life she never deserved. With each passing day, Peter worked tirelessly to gather the money needed to pay off Sarah's debt to Madame Victoria. He took on extra jobs, saved every penny he could, and reached out to friends and family, explaining Sarah's plight and pleading for their help. And to his amazement, the support poured in from all corners as people rallied behind Peter's noble cause. Drawing on every resource at his disposal, Peter worked tirelessly to gather the funds needed to pay off Sarah's debt. Finally, after weeks of hard work and determination, Peter had gathered enough money to pay off Sarah's debt in full. With a sense of purpose burning in his heart, he marched straight to Madame Victoria's brothel, ready to confront the woman who had held Sarah captive for so long to free Sarah once and for all. Madame Victoria, I have come to settle Sarah's debt. Here is the money in full, Peter said with determination in his voice. Madame Victoria's eyes widened in surprise as Peter handed over the money, realizing that she could no longer hold Sarah captive. Reluctantly, she accepted the payment. Very well, but note that this changes nothing. Sarah is mine, and she will always belong to me, Madame Victoria said reluctantly, but Peter refused to back down knowing that he held the power of love on his side. With the help of a lawyer, he forced Madame Victoria to sign an agreement, releasing Sarah from her clutches once and for all. With trembling hands, Sarah signed the agreement that Madame Victoria had prepared, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and excitement. As the ink dried on the paper, she felt a weight lift off her shoulders. A sense of freedom washed over Sarah like never before, knowing that she was finally free from the chains that had bound her for so long. She could hardly believe that she was finally free from the darkness that had consumed her. You are free now, Sarah. You don't belong in that place. You deserve to be happy and to live life of freedom, Peter said to Sarah with a smile on his face. Tears welled up in Sarah's eyes as she looked at Peter, overwhelmed with gratitude for all that he had done for her. Tears of joy filled Sarah's eyes as she embraced Peter feeling a sense of gratitude and love unlike anything she had ever known. Thank you, Peter. I don't know how to repay you for everything you have done for me. You have given me a second chance at life, and I will never forget it. I will be forever grateful. Sarah said with a voice filled with emotions, as she was choked with emotions. But Peter shook his head, knowing that the greatest reward was seeing Sarah free and happy once again. With a sense of relief and joy coursing through her veins, Sarah took Peter's hand, knowing that together they could face whatever challenges lay ahead. Together, they walked out of Madame Victoria's brothel, leaving behind the darkness of the past and stepping into a future filled with hope, love and endless possibilities. With the weight of Madame Victoria's oppression lifted from her shoulders, Sarah stepped out into the world with a renewed sense of hope and determination. The sun seemed to shine brighter, and the air felt lighter as she breathed in the sweet scent of freedom. Guided by Peter's unwavering support, Sarah embarked on a journey of transformation, determined to carve out a new life for herself. With his help, she enrolled in school, eager to continue her education and pursue her dreams. Peter stood by her side every step of the way, guiding her towards a new beginning filled with endless possibilities. Together, they mapped out a plan for Sarah's future, determined to leave the darkness of the past behind and embrace the light of a brighter tomorrow. You are so brave, Sarah. I know you will do great things, Peter said with a proud smile on his face. Sarah's heart swelled with gratitude as she listened to Peter's words, realizing that she was finally being given the chance to reclaim the life that had been stolen from her. But Peter didn't stop there. Knowing that Sarah deserved more than just an education, he helped her find a job guiding her through the process of interviews and resumes until he landed the position that suited her skills and interests. She looked at Peter, overwhelmed by the kindness and generosity he had shown her, alongside all his encouragement. I never thought I would have a chance at a real life again. Thank you, Peter. You have given me a hope for the future, when I had none. 
As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Sarah's confidence grew, fueled by the support and encouragement of her newfound friends and mentors. With each passing day, she felt herself becoming stronger, more resilient, and more determined to make the most of her second chance at life. But regardless of the excitement of her new beginning, Sarah never forgot where she came from or the struggle she had endured to get to where she was. She carried the memories of her past with her, a reminder of the obstacles she had overcome and the strength she had found within herself. And as she looked to the future, Sarah knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, she would face them head on, fueled by the power of love, hope and support of those who believed in her. For in her heart, she knew that with Peter by her side, anything was possible. With tears of joy in her eyes, Sarah embraced Peter, knowing that she owed him her life in more ways than one. Peter smiled warmly at Sarah, his heart swelling with pride at her resilience and determination. Together, they walked hand in hand down the bustling streets of Abaddon, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As Sarah settled into her new life, she found solace in the routine of school and her co-workers at, at her job. Each day brought new challenges and triumphs, but with Peter's unshaken support, she faced them with all courage and resilience. Amidst the joy of her newfound freedom, Sarah couldn't shake the lingering shadows of her past. Memories of Madame Victoria's brothel haunted her dreams, reminding her of the darkness she had escaped. Years passed, and Sarah's life blossomed in ways she never thought possible, and she had built a new life for herself with Peter by her side. She thrived in her studies and excelled in her career, becoming a shining example of resilience and determination. Together, they had faced countless challenges and overcome every obstacle that stood in their way, thereby growing stronger with each passing day. But amidst the joys of her newfound success, Sarah couldn't shake the lingering pain of her past. Despite her best effort to move forward, the memories of her time at Madame Victoria's brothel haunted her a constant reminder of the hardship she had endured. One day, as Sarah was sorting through some old belongings, she stumbled upon a faded photograph of her aunt Rebecca and her husband. Memories of her childhood flooded back, bringing with them a mix of emotions, love, loss, and a deep sense of longing for the family she had lost. With a heavy heart, Sarah realized that she had never truly said goodbye to her aunt, nor has she ever found closure for the pain and sorrow she had pledged her for so long. And so, with determination burning in her heart, she set out to confront the ghosts of her past and finally laid them to rest. On one fateful day, Sarah received news that her aunt Rebecca had passed away, along with her husband, leaving behind a legacy of love and loss. At first, Sarah's heart ached with grief at the news of her aunt's passing. Despite the pain of the past, she couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness for the woman who had taken her in when she had nowhere else to turn. I'm here for you, Sarah. Whatever you need, I will be by your side. Peter said comfortingly to her. Sarah nodded, grateful for Peter's unwavering support. Together, they traveled to Aunt Rebecca's hometown to pay their last respects to the woman who had played a vital role in Sarah's life. Upon arriving in her hometown, Sarah was met with mixed emotion as she visited the places of her past, the house where she had grown up, the school she had attended, and the street she had walked as a child. Each place held a piece of her heart, a reminder of the life she had left behind and the person she had become. Aunt Rebecca may have made a mistake, but I can't hold on to anger forever. It's time to let go and find happiness, Sarah said. As I stood by Aunt Rebecca's graveside, Sarah felt a mix of emotions swelling inside her, sadness for the loss of her aunt, gratitude for the love she had shown her, and a sense of closure for the pain of her past. As Sarah knew beside the grave, she traced her fingers over the letters carved into the stone, feeling a wave of emotion wash over her. Aunt Rebecca, I hope you can hear me, Sarah said softly. I want you to know that I have forgiven you. I forgive you for everything that happened. For the pain and suffering you caused me, I know you were struggling too, and I want to believe that you did the best you could. After saying this, Sarah felt a weight lift off her shoulders, a burden of resentment and anger that she had carried for far too long. 
she felt a sense of peace and closure knowing that she had finally let go of the past and embraced forgiveness as they were about walking away from aunt rebecca's grave sarah felt a sense of closure wash over her knowing that she had finally made peace with the past and as she looked to the future she knew that she was ready to embrace whatever challenges lay ahead confident in the knowledge that she had the love and support of those who mattered most let's go peter i'm ready to start the next chapter of my life sarah said with a sense of determination you are so strong sarah i'm proud of you peter said placing a comforting hand on sarah's shoulder sarah smiled gratefully at peter grateful for all his support and encouragement ever since their paths crossed with those words sarah took peter's hand feeling a sense of excitement and anticipation bubbling up inside her together they stood in silence for a moment longer soaking in the serenity of the moment before turning to leave sarah knew that the road ahead would be filled with twists and turns but with peter by her side she was ready to face whatever came her way free from the dark shadows of the brothel she left behind the shadows of her past and embraced the promise of a brighter future sarah stepped into a world of possibilities with peter guiding her and directing her sarah gazed at the busy street of Ibadan, her heart brimming with gratitude towards peter i can't thank you enough peter you have given me a second chance at life she said peter smiled his eyes reflecting her joy you deserve all the happiness in the world sarah i will always be here for you no matter what as the seasons changed so did sarah's life with her newfound education she secured a job at the local bookstore where she immersed herself in the world of literature every page turned was a step closer to her dreams and a testament to her perseverance peter watched with pride as sarah flourished his heart overflowing with love for the remarkable woman she had become together they shed laughter and tears waging life stones side by side one day as they strode through the park hand in hand sarah's eyes sparkled with excitement peter do you remember when we first met sarah asked i never could have imagined the journey we would take together peter smiled his heart swelling with affection i remember it like it was yesterday sarah and i wouldn't change a single moment of it they sat inside the beautiful lounge having a drink sarah there is something i have been meaning to ask you peter said what is it peter sarah asked curiously peter taking a deep breath not sure about the exact words to use he said will you will you marry me sarah for a moment the words seemed to stand still as sarah processed his words then with tears in her eyes and a smile on her lips she moved closer to him and whispered the answer he had been longing to hear yes peter a thousand times yes as she said emotionally and so they sealed their love with a kiss knowing that together they could conquer anything that life threw their way as they walked home hand in hand the promise of a brighter future beckoned filling their heart with hope joy and dreams for the future ahead one thing was certain the future stretched out from them a vast landscape of endless possibilities one lesson from this story is that no matter the circumstances it's essential to hold on to hope and keep striving for a better future despite facing immense challenges and being exploited by those she trusted sarah persevered found love and eventually rebuilt her life it teaches us the importance of resilience forgiveness and the power of love and support in overcoming adversity thank you for watching this amazing story about sarah on african stories if you liked it and felt inspired with her journey please show your support by clicking the like button sharing with your friends and leaving a comment below to see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures subscribe to african stories and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you until we meet again stay connected stay inspired and keep smiling